My name is Leomi Tuberville. I'm from Peterman, Alabama. Basket uh, lady. Yeah, the, the kids call me the basket lady. Um, I do this as a hobby and as demonstrations. I go around living history demonstrations and demonstrate basket weaving. And the little kids sell little baskets to the little kids. And have fun at it. Have fun while I do it. I am weaving baskets. These are going to be creek double wall, double wall baskets. That's what it's called. And you start, I'm using reed, R-E-E-D, as a material. Um, they would have used different type vines, like morning glory, um, just any vine, honeysuckle, things that we have around here. Um, different type grasses. They could use different type grasses to make baskets. And so um, you have to wet the vi wet the reed because it's very dry when you first eat it. You have to wet it so that you can bend it and work. Be mean to it, I guess you would say, so you can work it the way you want to. And you start with um, yeah, the scissors right here. So you start with 12 pieces, the same length. And I'm just starting a basket, so you have to start with 12 pieces, the same length. My piece on the ground. Um, and then I split those up into two groups of six each. And then you have to find the center of each group and match the centers together. And then you'll lay a weaver across them and start weaving. And if you give me just a minute, I should have had this done beforehand. Um, uh, it's gonna take me just a minute to get them quilted. And then I'll just show you, because it's easier to see what I'm doing than let me just keep talking about it. And if the ends aren't perfect, that's okay. Because the way I do it, it never stays perfect. Because it depends on how much tension you put on it, they're going to slip as you're weaving. But now, the Native Americans were very ingenious in that they used everything of what they were going to use. That's what I was telling him, like the cattail, they used the entire plant. Um, several other things, pine cones, you know. But now, they had to make these type baskets before the Europeans came because they did not have metal tools. So they couldn't make, ever says, well, what about white oak? Do you do white oak baskets? That came later, after Europeans came and they could trade with them to get metal tools. Once they got the metal tools, then they could split the hardwoods. Before that, they couldn't split hardwood. In fact, if they wanted to fell a tree, they did what's called, they'd ring, ring it, and then they'd go back after it had died, and they would put fire in the base of it, and that's how they would fell a tree. So, a lot less work than what we do. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Almost there, folks. And I have to get quiet when I'm counting, I'm sorry. <laughs> Now, the baskets I have are just purely for decorative purposes only. Um, of course, they would have made baskets to, for functional reasons, you know, to use them. But they also, the Miko of the chief, would hold contests. He, when he knew that he was going to have a Vistan Miko come in, he would go around to all the artisans in his town and he would um, have contests. So basket weaving contest, the person that could weave the smallest, tightest basket won the contest. And so on and so forth with all of them. And then he would go back to that person and he would commission them to make a basket for the visitors that were coming in. Because of course he wanted to give, give away his best. And he wanted to showcase his best. Look what I have in my town. Do you have this? kind of thing and um, so yeah so I can do small and I can do big but I don't know if I'd ever want a contest okay, let's count and see what we have one two three four five six one two three four five six all right, then I'll push my ends together. I will fold it, match the ends, 
find the center and I kind of hold it right there like that while I do the other one. Another piece, okay, now this, and I lay across it at a diagonal, and I go under and over, under and over, and do that three times. Two, three. And when you get back the third time, you start breaking that group of six into groups of two. And you continue going under and over and under and over. And the good thing is, if you make a mistake, it's very easy to take it out and go back and fix it. Because it shows up pretty quick. Go around to the third group, and you just catch the end of that, um, the beginning of this one. Just catch it up and kind of weave it in. Under, split this one up. Over. And then when you get to the last group of six, you do it different, and you break it down into two groups, three each but you continue your over and your under. And what that does, it gives you an odd number around. So when you get back to the beginning, what your, o your under is now an over and vice versa. So just, that's basically it. And then you're gonna weave it. And we're starting at the base of the basket. And you'll weave as tall as you want it and then fold down and continue the same process down. How long does it take to finish that basket? Oh, uh, what time is it? It, probably, it depends on what, how tall I make it, but within an hour, hour and a half maybe. If I make it small like that one or a small one. What size will it come out to be? Um, it just depends at this point. Depends on how far, how big a diagram I make here. And sometimes when you're weaving them, it depends on how tight you're pulling that it'll actually start turning hey, up on itself. Doing? And that will kind of give you a, um, I like the size. kind of set the size. I like the sign. But, oh, no but, <laughs> but if you, um, can keep it, if you want it bigger and you can keep it from turning, Okay, sometimes sometimes you make mistakes, and I'm not going back. I'm just going to keep on going. And you just go with the flow. There it is right there. It's time to separate the wrong way. Under. Over. Under. But, it, yeah, it depends. If it's, like, small, it, it won't even be an hour. It just depends on how tall I'll make it. And like I said, I tend to be try to be a perfectionist sometimes and get this too tight and try to make have no holes in the bottom. And sometimes it's best just to go with it because you just frustrate yourself. Because as you weave, you're gonna it kind of tightens up. It may not get rid of all the holes, but we're not trying to make anything waterproof because it's, it's not because water is going to permeate through it. But you can make it tight enough that. It will actually hold work for a few minutes. 